something is strange about this McFarlane Batman, almost as if I've seen this sculpt many times before. In an effort to make sure that people don't go as crazy as the Dr. Hugo Strange trying to hunt down this Platinum Chase, I decided to opt out of doing what I originally was going to do, which is going to be a short on this guy. But as I played with the figure more and thought about these intrinsic opinions of where this figure could have reached its ultimate potential as its own thing, much like the character himself, Hugo Strange, it opted in for trying to be yet another Batman. So you can see the poetics kind of lining up right here and how this could have been effectively a really awesome take on the character who's so obsessed with Batman that he ultimately starts wearing his exact clothes, or in this case, suit, but it's almost like McFarlane couldn't help themselves but really just play it a little too safe to the point where things started to actually kind of unravel both in a QC manner and also in a very subjective one. Officially, the box labels this as being the Hugo Strange as Batman from Batman Transference. However, if you know anything about the character, you know that he is m so morbidly obsessed with Batman that he's willing to either kill his own parents if they were still alive or frankly just kill the Batman himself and take over in the role. Which is not necessarily a very uncommon trait. I feel like an awful lot of those kind of tragedies do happen in real life, especially with the... Uh, Mexican-American community, I feel like the one scenario that comes to mind is Selena, where that whole thing happened back in 95, very tragic. So Hugo Strange's kind of psyche took that very twisted turn, and at the point where he's starting to wear the suit right here that he modeled for himself. Except, like I said, as far as the superficial details, you can see that it's got a much more very apparent uh, look about it as far as the blue hue and the gray that they utilized. And it's very lifted from the comics. It's got this comic book template that is very saturated, especially with the navy blue that they chose. It's not too dark, not too muted. The gray, however, is a little toned down to kind of emphasize a little bit on the blue. And then most specifically, the yellow details behind the belt and the very specific bat symbol. The bat symbol that almost looks like it's smiling, very, not too unlike the character likes to do himself very maniacally. So I do like that the bat symbol right there is tailored to his character, to his persona. It's got kind of like this very twisty, male malevolent kind of demeanor to the bat symbol. And I do like that on his person, he's got these kind of glitching, maniacal kind of gesture to his hands, making it look like he's tortured. But it's very difficult to dance around the elephant in the room without finally tackling it head on. The rest of the buck, as you can see, is a little strange, and again, I know that's not intended to be a pun, but it's a little strange to be fitting a character like Hugo Strange, who's not necessarily this yoked all the time. Even while wearing the suit, in specific panels of the comic, he's a little slimmed down, a little uh, anemic looking, so he's not necessarily filling in the suit the way that the Dark Knight likes to do. But here, dude's been working on his bod, his physique, That he is that obsessed. Or maybe it's McFarlane simply just using the hush buck one more goddamn time. Yeah, take a closer look and you'll see so many other gi dead giveaways apart from, of course, the bowleggedness of the legs themselves and the shins that I've always remarked before. But then you'll take a look at the mid-torso cut as well as the way that the kind of textured look to the suit is sculpted. Those are the exact identical wrinkles and crinkles that you can kind of make out right there on the abs and the rest of the torso, even down right to the obliques right there. The only thing that looks like it was kind of sculpted and molded differently is the areas and the little bit of wrinkles that you can kind of see circling around the bat symbol right there that they naturally needed to do to make sure that it looked a little different. But once you get to the arms, it just becomes even more apparent with a little bit of the circular nature to the shoulders and then the gauntlets with the elongated spikes there on the side. It's straight up the hush buck through and through. And because of that, I feel almost obligated to kind of breeze a little bit through the articulation. I really don't feel the need to cover it again since I've covered it so many times on the channel. But you guys already know most of the drill here. The top arms can definitely rotate 360 uh, right there vertically as well as being able to extend. And like I mentioned many times with the hushbuck, in terms of like shrugging or any kind of motion in any 
degrees as far as shrugging or butterfly movement. It's a little bit on the limited side. It's never been the most favorable when it comes to shoulder uh, outside of vertical rotation or extension on the hinge. But then the biceps can definitely rotate 360 degrees. Just do be careful because of the girthiness of those muscles. Two joints at the elbow that are fully able to bend all the way up. You do have those ball joints at the wrist that I'm not the biggest fan of. But of course, being the hush bug, they're going to be coming back and still allow the hands to be able to rotate 360 as well as be being able to bend inwards and outwards. Of course, just like I've remarked with the hush bug, the mid torso cut can definitely rotate 360 and can definitely extend towards the back pretty modestly, but crunching in is pretty much stuck. It just stops right about right there at a plank kind of manner. And side to side is not much that different either or much better improved. The waist can technically rotate, but it's a little bit on the squeeze, squeezy side because of the way that the diaper piece is modeled, especially with that brand new belt. And then same thing with the top leg joints that can kind of extend forwards about that far, like your average McFarlane, and a little bit towards the back before it starts to have this gap appear between the leg and the diaper piece as well as the crotch piece. But at least that does allow for some good extension towards the sides. Can't really complain too much right about right there. And then the knees can definitely bend upwards about right there in a ratcheted manner. However, much like the Hush Bucks in times of before, they don't have that iconic or rather refined ankle joint that I really like that flushes with the rest of the boot. This time, they still opted for the ball joint. It's like, they, like I said, they just kind of copied and pasted. So I'm not the biggest fan of what exactly is transpiring here because if they were... If they have really tapped into the potential and said, you know what, let's make sure that we keep the refinements that we've made in the time since, then they would have brought back that really flush to the boot ankle joint that I really like. That is cylindrical, cuts down in the middle, but still allows full rotation horizontally. We don't really have that here. We have the very obvious ball joint that still allows the foot to be able to bend downwards and upwards in a ratchet fashion, but then... S rotating it horizontally it can still happen at the top of the joint but because of the way that it's modeled and sculpted in that very sphere like manner every time i try to do that it just ends up kind of pivoting and angling it there at the side or inwards like you see before you right there so i'm not the biggest fan of how antiquated this still feels but at least the toesies are still very fluid and can bend upwards right about right there so like i said everything is just pretty par for the course as far as your hush buck including the head sculpt as well as the joint within it. Now, you may be wondering, why did I skip the head joint so very abruptly like that? Well, that's because, as you have been able to notice, apart from the remarks that I made about the suit, as well as the the recycling of the hushbuck itself, at least one very glaring difference is donning the top of the knocker right there, which is, of course, this rather immaculate and really well-painted and sculpted Hugo Strange Head sculpt. I gotta be honest, my flowers do in fact go towards this head sculpt because it really is in fact Hugo Strange. You got the beard, you got the gray inside of the beard that's painted immaculately, the actual skin texture as well as the wrinkles on his forehead, the glasses, that very evil smile, the eyebrows kind of raised. That is in fact Hugo Strange. So my kudos to whoever came up with the head sculpt right here. It is immaculate. It is really well done and it's ultimately one of the biggest highlights of this brand new feat or semi brand new figure. Now, you better enjoy it the way that it is right now because you ain't going to be able to do much shit without with it because <laughs> head articulation is actually modeled very much after the hush buck through and through, including having the joint be at the bottom of the neck as opposed to it being a separate headpiece. So the entirety of the neck and the head sculpt is conjoined into one piece. So if you want to turn it, you have to be able to turn it at the base of the neck, which is, in my opinion super super stuck as you can see right there it is squeaking very very hard as i turn the head left and right almost 360 rotation is pretty much null and void because of how tight it is on that joint and it could be due in part to this color piece that they sculpted around here that's made out of plastic but i'll do you one better the reason for why it's stuck that way is because plot twist I kind of made it that way. I pressed the head in there so tight for it to be able to stay on because, unfortunately, at the time, I didn't necessarily grab any kind of footage like with this, whether it be with my camera or my phone. But straight out of the box, head came off. 
the head came off. And it wasn't like in that old, like, oh, clumsy me kind of way. No, it's like, uh, no, like I mentioned before, this head sculpt, very similar to the original Batman Hush head sculpt, where it's all one piece, the neck and the head, is based at the base of the neck to be able to grab onto the ball joint inside. But it came off straight out of the box. It didn't have enough, like, pull or adhesive or it was sculpted very weird. And it just came off, I don't want to say loose, because it was just not placed on there properly. So, with as much force as I can muster into my triceps, I pressed the head deep in there. But because of the way that they molded this sculpted piece of plastic to form the collar, it grabbed onto the head. And now, the good news is that I managed to pop the head back onto its peg appropriately the way that it's supposed to so that it sits flush with the rest of the body and does look awkward it doesn't give him any kind of like giraffe neck or anything like that but the trade-off the bad news is that articulation is pretty much shot as far as being able to turn he can kind of bend downwards like so and slightly look up but again it gets stuck right about right there kind of like the original batman hush as you can see right about right there so pressing up it pretty much stops right about right there. And I feel like if I press any more forward or upwards, it's going to pop off and I'm going to have to go through that entire process again. You could toss that up to it being a bit of a QC problem, but I feel like I'm one of those believers where if it happens to happen to me, it's probably going to happen to anybody else. And it's a shame that I have to say that specifically about that collar plastic piece because the rest of the cape that it's holding in place is in fact not plastic. They opted to give him a fabric cape that's made out of that nylon material as opposed to it being a legitimate cloth cape that's pleated or double stitched or anything like that. But at least it's some form of fabric and it looks like it's becoming a trend that McFarlane is not going to go back on. So that's good to see that we're slowly starting to phase out the rubberized capes. So that's good. Quality, you know, a little bit of details and, and improvements like this to make the cost worth it. I just wish that we weren't really taking some half measured steps because as you can see right here it is pleated on the edges but it's being held in by a wire that is not as strong as some other wires have been used most recently with some of his figures specifically with the Nightfall Batman from the Nightfall and Bane 2 pack or even with the Batman and uh, Batman Forever Robin figure that came in that wave with a much more formidable cape that cape inside of that figure is amazing it's ridiculous but here the wired cape does a serviceable job of holding up the cape, but you can definitely tell as far as that feel that you that you come across in the touch that this is not exactly the strongest of the capes. If anything, it's probably going to be susceptible to bending in a very easy manner to where if you simply just push it up against a shelf or push it up against a different figure in that wrong manner, it's going to bend the wire in a different direction that you would have wanted it to pose it. Plus, is it just me or do I feel like his cape is just way too short? There's even a little bit of a conspiracy theory that I have where I feel like somewhere in the process, his cape got sw swapped with that of Adam West because the Adam West figure comes with a very elongated cape to the point where I feel like the stitching is kind of off on that guy. So to see that Hugo Strange is the one with the shorter cape and considering that Adam West sported a shorter cape in the show itself, I'm like, uh, did we get our wires crossed or rather our capes crossed here? Because I feel like... A swap is in order here, and I'm looking forward to seeing if anybody online, whether it be on the subreddit or on Twitter or Facebook groups, are going to take to customizing this guy and give him a cape swap. You know, we hear about head swaps all the time. Maybe we can give him a cape swap with that of the Adam West, and he'll look a little bit more appropriate or at least better enough to mask some of the problems that I have with the figure, apart from re recycling a previously released bug that doesn't match the character, but also with some of the QC problems that I was having with the head. Now on the bright side, he didn't come alone. He does come with an extra pair of hand accessories, though they are a little bit on the asymmetrical side. Even though I was enjoying the personality behind the very, like I said, maniacal, evil, clenching, semi-clenching hands that he comes with on person, he does come with these alternate hands, but one of them is a fist, and then the other one is the semi-holding hand. It looks like he is able to hold something with it. And technically speaking, he doesn't come with any batarangs or gadgets of any kind since he's not the true Batman. But in his effort to become the true Batman, he does come with actually a rather cool and very creepy Bruce Wayne latex mask or whatever kind of mask that's made out of a very suspicious material. But nevertheless, the actual paintwork and sculpting of making sure that this looks like a very stretched out mask that someone like Leatherface would be proud of... 
uh, they actually kind of outdid themselves there over at the sculpting team because the paint applications and the way that they were able to stretch out the Bruce Wayne face and the hair alike, it definitely feels like something that he would be adequately holding uh, upon being discovered by the Scooby-Doo game. <laughs> Truth be told, though, there's a part of me that kind of wishes it was a little bit wearable, but at the same time, I feel like in the long run, that's going to cause more problems than it's worth as far as either the latex material weathering out, the rubberized material, either caving to certain temperature conditions. You guys have seen my video about how I had to pretty much sacrifice my wrestler suit Spider-Man because the rubber that they used for the alternate costume pretty much melted away, so I had to cut it off and wipe it away, and it was pretty much eradicated. So I wouldn't necessarily want that to happen to more accessories that I have in my collection. So it's cool that it's made out of the sculpted plastic and thrown in with the Hugo Strange character, and it kind of, like I said, fits in to the personality, but man... Guys, I don't know, but I just feel like there was just so much great potential on a Hugo Strange's Batman figure, especially for people who are fans of this specific turn in the comics. And even more so if there's some people out there who, out of all the characters inside of the Rogue Gallery of Villains, Hugo Strange could very well be their favorite. And maybe this whole time they were waiting around for McFarlane to deliver on that particular character, especially with him donning the Batman suit and kind of fitting into, like I said, his very obsessive personality. But I just feel like so much of that potential was somewhat lackluster and squandered with the recycling of the Batman Hushbuck, which, again, is not necessarily a bad sculpt as far as being able to utilize it for definitive Batmans or repaints. But to have other characters now being put into the role, but you're still using that original body mold. And here, I think it's probably one of the areas where it just does not fit because it's not even that exact character. That combined with some minor QC problems. And again, the little bit of shortcutting that was done with the cape that I think could have been done a little better. The added accessory of the mask, as well as that immaculate head sculpt is not enough to really make me ignore those problems. And as such, the Hugo Strange as Batman Platinum Chase gets a 6 out of 10 from me. It, it, I know it's it'll be tempting to pick it up once you see it in the store, but I feel like before you do, aside from the fact that you're a completionist, because I feel like if you're a completionist, this is probably going to be a dead giveaway for some of you. You're probably going to pick it up regardless. But if you are a little bit on the budget side and you think of yourself... Which figure can I afford to leave behind should you come across like that major haul? Like Walmart just restocked. They just put up all the Platinums. They put up the brand new wave that McFarlane Toys themselves has not even shipped yet. Which figure can you afford to leave behind because you only have so much money? I feel like at this stage in the game, should they come up with a much better improved version later down the line, you could probably leave behind this Hugo Strange as Batman. And all of these things that I needed to translate in a video format were just way too much to kind of compact into a singular short and that's why i needed to make a full-length video and if you managed to stick all the way to the very end of this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you liked it thumbs down if you did not a massive thank you to our executive producers at the level two tier tom bowling are you guys currently on the hunt for this hugo strange batman it did any of these things that i brought up in the video kind of sway you in any kind of direction as far as picking them up or not let me know down below, and as always, guys, stay humble. I'll see you later.